Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Becky from Northampton Film Festival, and this is the last of today's um, uh, chats with filmmakers that have been shortlisted um, for Northampton Film Festival 2023. Um, if you are watching live, um, then you can put questions uh, for our guests in a moment in the, the comments, and if they're vaguely relevant, we will put them to people. Um, if um, you are watching again, that is fine, just don't ask any questions, um, except you're very welcome, obviously, to get in touch with Northampton Film Festival um to find out more about 2024 and all sorts of stuff we're northamptonfilmfestival.co.uk um also if you go on the website there you can find the program for this year's festival um so without uh further ado i'm going to bring in our filmmakers so we're speaking to the makers of feature film lollipops and candy floss um so i have with us um director gary rogers and also writer Elena bracken hello everybody how are you hello and good evening and so um, I always get uh, people, I haven't let them warm up, but um, I always get people to give us a little bit of a pitch as what is the film about? Shall I start that then? <laughs> <laughs> Who, so, whoever wants to jump in. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a really uplifting story about, that. there's two main characters really that come together um, that haven't seen each other since they left school, which was about five, no, five, six, seven years um, and and and, and to sort of realise that they've kind of missed out on their childhood in a way. Um, as the story goes on, you find out that they're both looking after parents um, through various reasons and the difficulties that come with that. And the fact that these two characters then come together and realise they're in a very similar position um end up through this friendship of helping each other out um and sort of helping their problems out and starting to live their life that they've almost missed for the last sort of seven eight years it's of course stealing oh, yeah. Their childhood yeah yeah exactly yeah. that i mean when, when i read it i i i kind of thought it I, I sort of described it in one way as a coming of age film which you know normally you see their sort of teenage years but these these guys are in their sort of mid-20s but it's a coming of age film because they've sort of missed out on that childhood um, yeah, so, yeah so that's, that's a really interesting way to pitch it yeah definitely yeah yeah and i mean obviously um eleanor you wrote this where did it come from just my brain i don't even know honestly like um i i ADHD probably I don't know you just come up with ideas when you're daydreaming and I just kind of had this one idea that stuck I was like you know what? I'm gonna put pen to paper um so I wrote it like six years ago and it just kind of sat there um and I kind of went through something very similar to Gary um and pulled out the script again I was like you know what I'm gonna see if we can make it put it to Gary and then all of a sudden when we were filming it I pointed out that when I wrote it, it was it was just funny. It was whimsical with a little bit of drama, a little bit of tension, um, kind of getting stuff off my chest onto a page. But then when we actually got into the process of making it and filming it, it just became this whole different thing. And there were notes in it that I didn't even realize I was writing about until we were saying the lines. And it was like, actually, it's about the, 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 the. It was never just for fun. And it was never just um, just to see what I could do. It was actually quite profound. To me and i think to gary because we were yeah nice. i mean that was it because there were there were some things in that script wasn't there that both of us could relate to oh, yeah. um so it did it and i think well at that point certain things hadn't happened in my life when i read it but then later happened but before we yeah. shot it so that's why it became more like say prolific when we shot it more intense um, than it tended to be i think yeah yeah um but that that was the thing when i read it because eleanor sent me the script and we didn't even know each other personally at that point did we um and i, I was i can still never i'm not even sure how you got hold of me to send it me really, really i was really. stalking you a little bit because i was looking for someone yeah. to make it and we had a yeah. mutual friend who i don't even yeah. know so you'd you'd worked on a film with uh and that's called aj aj reeves and oh, I, yeah. I knew him from acting class, yeah. And then mm. I'd kind of like added him, and then he had a friend called Ryan, and I'd add Ryan and Ryan you. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stalk you a little bit. That's how that happened. 
Yeah, you know, no, and it's really weird because this script called Lollipops and Candy Floss then la landed on my lap. And I, I, my expectations, um, no disrespect, was kind of by the name. I'm like, this is going to be a girly movie. It's going to be a really girly kind of movie. And that's why it took me by surprise. I started reading it, and normally maybe scripts, I may read a bit and then put it away and read a bit. And I started reading it, and it was really, the start of the film was really quite lighthearted and funny. And then a little bit later on, you see this when, when the character gets home, and you see the home life and realise the real world that that character's in, and the this sudden hard hitting fight that that occurs, I was not expecting it. And then the journey no. on, yeah, I, I couldn't put it down. I just couldn't put the script down. And I read it front to back in about an hour, and literally messaged Eleanor and said, "Right, we've got to make this. I want to make it." And it went from there, didn't it? Yeah, really. It took a while, COVID. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah. then then COVID sort of really stopped it, didn't it? Um, yeah, two two years, a year and a half. Yeah, that that sort of slowed that down. But it was, I mean, it was quite good in a way because we went to see a location. We actually first met at a location because I read the script and there was a location, this camping location, and I went, I actually know where that is. I this exists because the way it was written was quite specific in that there was a river and the scenery, this gorgeous scenery. I said, I actually know this campsite. So we met there at the campsite. I said, I'll take you to the campsite and then we can discuss from that point on the movie and how we're going to make it. And you saw the campsite, didn't you? You was like, oh, my God, that's, that's Doing it. Good. Yes, yeah. this is it. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah no the location yeah, made, it, made it possible. Well, and, and you both had kind of various roles on, on this because, um, I mean, Elena, you're, you know, you, um, you uh, obviously wrote it, but you're also in it. Um, and, do you, yeah, tell us a little bit about your, your roles. Let's start with, with you, Elena. Um, so when it was written, it was written, but I, I kind of had an advantage from an actor's standpoint having written it. I didn't have to, I mean, I looked at Gary a lot, but I didn't have to turn to him and be like, well, what do I mean here? Why am I saying this? Because I knew because I wrote it. Um, there was a benefit there in terms of producing it and putting it together. All, most of the actors, the vast majority, I've done amateur dramatics with, and they're just ridiculously talented human beings to an irritating really? level who are so talented, like, oh my goodness, ridiculously talented, yeah. who have never kind of had that moment to show a bunch of people outside of theatre what they're capable of. Um, so I just kind of picked that, like, coached them. And then as soon as I had the cast and the crew and, and the schedule, it was all in Gary's hands. <laughs> I just kind of took it from there. And it, it was, it, it's, it's an indie film in 100% every sense in that the, there, were, there was virtually no crew, was there, to be honest? You know, it, it was sort of me and a spare hand at times to hold a boom mic and that. Um, you know, it was just cool. it worked for free. Everyone who did yeah. what they did, actors, uh, Elsa, obviously, is it everybody who helped out yeah. didn't get which is sucky, I know. But when you have absolutely no money, limited time frame, and you just have a bunch of people who love what they do and are, and are extremely talented, that's that's exciting because you know, everyone is there because they really, really want to be there, it, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. and. It it, it it is sort of a testament to what you can do with nothing, you know, yeah. it, it literally was. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll say nothing, um, there was some cost. £2,000 budget, start yeah. to finish, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is crazy, you know, for, for, for what we got out of it, it was just yeah. great. Absolutely, and I mean, um, I'm talking of, because, you know, when, when you, like, um, when you try and make something with so little resources, um, you know, obviously you need to, ideally, particularly when you're making a feature, to you know have, have done um, a lot of stuff, seen some pitfalls, try and avoid them. So, I mean, Gary, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yes. Um, so I, I'm predominantly um, a freelance DOP. So, you know, I, I do camera work. I mean, at that point, I've, I've probably shot, well, now... I think it's about 16, 17 feature films of, of various sizes from no budget to about 
half a million, three quarter of a million budget. Um, and and through Country Star Productions, which is sort of my production company, you know, done music videos, corporate videos, just just if it involves a camera, you know, I, I've kind of done it. Um, so so that's sort of my background on it. Um, I mean, I I shot my first feature film back in 2018 and realised just how hard it, it is. You know, I'd shot a lot of shorts before then and then we did our own feature and it stressed me out something <laughs> that terrible. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, at that point it was like, you're just doing everything. So I was trying to DP direct, do do call sheets at the end of the day, a long day. Uh, it's just such hard work when you're trying to do everything yourself. But fair play, you know, Eleanor kind of did pretty much all of that side of things, really. You know, you, you arranged all the locations, the actors, and call sheets and planning it. So, I did all the yeah. stuff I knew how to do because from your job, wouldn't have had a clue. I learned a lot from you, actually. A lot, a lot, a lot from the whole experience. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, I, I think that's the thing. Anyway, um, you, no matter how many films you might have shot, you, you always learn something. I, I always learn something on every film. You know, um, there's always something that's different about every single film. You know, and you yeah, always definitely. learn from it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That, absolutely. Which is humbling, really. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, um, yeah, Eleanor, what, what's your background? Was it the writing, the acting, producing, or a bit of everything again? And is that what you plan to kind of continue doing, or is one element now like no, <laughs> never again? Acting and writing for sure. I think, um, acting bugs an acting bug. Anyone who does acting will tell you it's a book. As soon as you start doing it, you're like, this is it forever, this is me. <laughs> um, I don't get paid to do it, I wish I did, but I don't, so you know, just wherever I can do it, I will do it, which is writing. A lot of it is just writing your own rules. And everyone says, like, you want to make something and it will put you in it. Just make it yourself. You know, just good advice. Absolutely. And so do you have uh, something else in the pipeline, can I ask? I have a few ideas. Yeah. Do you? Do you? Short film. Short. Not okay. feature. Because for a first film, I wouldn't have started with a feature, in hindsight. <laughs> um, but we did well. So what am I talking about? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I mean, actually, that that is a good point that your first mm -hmm. film was a feature film, uh, yep. which is doing so well, you know. So <laughs> incredible, really. I don't know anyone else has actually done that. Thinking about it, it's definitely jumping in at the deep end for sure. Yeah, yeah. And like you say, sometimes you know those lessons are the best because you know. Um, yeah, because you know you've been there and done that now. Um, it's on to the next one. But as you say, maybe shorts. But um, but um, tell me, you were saying we were talking beforehand. You were saying that you know it's been to a lot of, of festivals, which is which is brilliant. You know, get getting a film made in the first place is hard, and then getting into festivals is hard. So you know, how has it kind of been received by audiences? Quite well, really, really well, I think, because we 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 had the premiere of it uh, up in Manchester. Uh, your neck of the woods, Eleanor, and I don't know how many people did we get there for the prem? 30, 40, 50? Oh, yeah, something oh, like that. Lots, yeah. there about but it, it was such a great experience because you, you are always scared stiff of the premiere because yeah. you do not know. You've seen the film so many times. I mean, I edited it and I've seen it a million times and you may think when you've made it, it's the best thing to slice bread, and then you say you give it to an audience, and they just don't get it. But especially from, I would it, say, from a standpoint, because the the premiere was it was people we knew. So when somebody yeah. knows you, and you're trying to make them believe that you're somebody else, they're the hardest people to convince. So that's nerve wracking in a sense for every for all of the actors who came and all of their uh, friends and family who came as well. And it, it, I mean, for me, it was the the laughter that the film got, or in the right places as well. There's nothing worse than making a film and, and the audience laughs. It's like, you're really not meant to be laughing at that point. It's not funny. But obviously, there's a lot of funny points in this film that it, it did produce solid laugh out loud. And it literally brought a tear to my eye because I, I just knew that it was working as well 
you know, um, as intended. Well, it's supposed to give you emotional whiplash, really. Exactly. Really, like, you're never up, you're never down. There's, the, you know, there's a bit of everything. So I wanted to get that, which we did, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think, yeah, you know, and, and, and I, that's what I saw in the script and I liked in the script when I read it because it, it was this emotional roller coaster that mm. I think a lot of people can relate to it as well. Yeah, it's you real. Know, a lot of people. Yeah, it, it's real. I mean, I, I've always liked drama like Shane Meadows type drama. This is England, this real life, mm -hmm. you know, drama that you can relate to. And and to me, that's what it was like. You know, that that's what I that's what appealed to me with, with the script. Definitely. Yeah, I definitely think that that comes across, you know, it's not something you can go, oh, yeah, I could put it in that box over there. Like you say, you've got heartfelt moments, you've got comedic moments, you've got things that feel like life. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I feel like, to be fair, we've covered quite a lot of ground there. Um, but yes, if, if people are interested in coming and seeing uh, Lollipops and Candy Floss, it's showing on Sunday, 28th of May at three o'clock. Uh, at Northampton Film Festival. Um, and yeah, I, I wish you all the best with its ongoing, uh, you know, um, uh, film festival journey, assuming it's going to go and do some more and whatever you choose to do next, I'll be quite interested in seeing. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you very much. And thank you for hosting us. No, oh, thank you. Um, so, yes, if you are interested in, in uh, coming and watching the film, um, have a look on northamptonfilmfestival.eventive.org for the full schedule. Um, and, yeah, I hope to see you there. I think, it's, I, think, I think I've chosen, even if I say so myself, a good a Sunday afternoon slot for, like I say, a film that, um, that covers a lot, is not just one thing. And I think will we'll leave you thinking, coming out thinking about life. Um, so, yes, thank you very much.